Hey everyone, welcome back to the Passive Buddies podcast and today we're going to cover one of possibly the most attractive passive income opportunities. I love this style and obviously thankfully, thankfully my co-host is an absolute star at this Um, (laughs) and we are going to show you how to make a thousand dollars with a SaaS company. Brandon, this mate is, I'm just going to be like a little school kid and just take a a ton of notes because this is going to be the bomb. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, this is actually how I started in the online space. Uh, I, I mean, I did some affiliate marketing and some just basic, uh, I think my first ever offer was how to be to be my friend online for, on Facebook. And I think we had that in a previous podcast. So definitely check that out and make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. And so uh, I got into SaaS and which is software as a service. And that's what SaaS means. And being able to leverage software to create recurring income is really how I got my start online. Because if you can build a recurring income from some kind of software or platform or whatever it is you're trying to create, you're able to compound that. And once you hit, you know, a hundred dollars, you can get it to a thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars. And the more people that you add on to this recurring product, the more you can make because uh, it's it continuously provides value to your customer, especially software where you're able to, um, you know, we have a we when I first started, I used a, a white label service. And I white labeled a product called High Level, which was a CRM tool, which did everything we've talked about, creating online courses, um, doing emails, doing uh, outreach, scheduling posts, pretty much, uh, pretty much everything. And I was pretty amazed by this software. Not many people knew about it because a lot of people were in ClickFunnels and that was their major competitor. And so I, um, the thing that I realized is that uh, a lot of people didn't want to spend, you know, what was it, $197 or $97 a month. And so I was like, well, if they're spending $97 a month and then $30 for email uh, active campaign, and then, you know, like per email they were sending, it was starting to add up very, very quickly to like $200 a month. And I was like, well, what if I just gave you this, piece of software. It, uh, I can download any ClickFunnels funnel in a sense, um, which one, I didn't have to funnel hack them. I could just copy it and then change it to uh, what I wanted. And I can download, say, a two comma club winner, uh, their funnel and or their funnel step and then use that as um, my own. And so um, they really like that. And so I was just taking uh, something that they've already used and then giving them a, a better alternative. And so with high level, I can put my own labeling on it and put my own branding on it as if it was my own software. And I could sell it to people for a recurring uh, fee, just like people would use ClickFunnels. And I was collecting 100% of the, the profits at that point because I didn't have to get affiliate commission. I, I, was, I was like the owner of the software by white labeling it. And so that's how I got started uh, with that. And it was funny because when I first started, I sold it as a high ticket offer. I think it was $14.97 for the year. And uh, I think if you sold five of those, it pretty much paid for the whole software for the next two years. So if you, I was able to do it for, if I was able to sell five of them uh, within that first week, um, it pretty much paid for my expenses for that product for the next two years. And I thought that was pretty cool. And so that's what I did. And that's how I got, uh, I sold it as a high ticket offer. And then once I got that, that first base down, um, I started selling it as recurring uh, product. Um, the first was a per year, then it went to per month and it was a higher price point. And that's how I started building out my first, uh, thousand dollars a month. And then I got up to $10,000 a month. And then I did what every business owner does is they get shiny object syndrome and, uh, do something else. Uh, I actually still, uh, use high level. And then what we ended up actually doing is creating our own 
Facebook CRM, which kind of works side by side with our, um, our first CRM, which was high level because it was now on Facebook versus email marketing and funnels and all that. So um, now I had uh, one business that was making $10,000 a month. And I was like, oh, I'll make, uh, I'll grow this Facebook tool to another $10,000 a month and do the same model. And so that's what we did is we, um, we took pretty much everything that people used on Facebook from their group, uh, getting a opt-in for their group with the questions and pushing that, uh, that email to high level and using that as to send out uh, an automated email to tracking our leads on Facebook, to scheduling posts on Facebook, to bulk messaging people on Facebook. So just allowing uh, us to have like a Facebook CRM that did really well and uh, built it just like the first where I sold it for a high ticket price. And then it was started becoming a monthly price and uh, pretty much covered my, my base to build it. And I think, did I, I don't know if we've talked about this, but essentially what I did um, with this is I made sure that there was product fit and that people actually wanted this. So I did market research, find out what the top tools people were using, combine them all into one tool, and then sold it for a high uh, price with a small group, made sure that they understand how to use it, have them fix out all the bugs. Similar to if you haven't read our course or haven't read our course, if you didn't watch our podcast about uh, how to start an online course, similar concept except, except using software as the, the leverage instead of a course where I'm doing the market research, I'm asking, I'm refining, um, I'm getting a high ticket and then I'm taking out the pieces that aren't important and then charging a, a monthly recurring fee to that. That's the same thing what we're doing with our inner circle. So it's all these models are pretty much the same. Um, it just depends on the, I guess, the product that you're pushing. Hmm. Okay. And in terms of like, how did you identify what software to, what soft type of software to create or run or to sell? So with a uh, high level, I, I tend to put things in front of people that people are kind of already using. So for instance, when I started with high level, I only was, I was only around ClickFunnels people. And mm -hmm. so I would just go, uh, I would use that. And it was better because I have experience from using their product, both products. And I, I, I loved high level and what it could do. Not only that, but a lot of people talk about funnel hacking and how you're supposed to funnel hack someone. This already allowed you to download uh, a funnel from any ClickFunnel uh, user in a sense. I just had to have their, their page. And so I could download that and I essentially funnel hacked. And so I, I jump on a call with someone and be like, hey, this is what the, our software does. Look at how much time it saves. I can download um, Jonathan Matoya's uh, page and download it instantly. Or I can download Russell Brunson's page of high uh, click funnels and use that instantly or the web webinar funnel, whatever that funnel was. So I could instantly download it and show them that they don't have to do it the old way of you know, having two screens up and, you know, okay, this is a column. Okay. This is a column. This is a, you know, a text box with a picture. This is a text box with a picture and doing it the slow way. I could just download it instantly and then change whatever I needed. Um, so like when I first started, I downloaded, um, oh man, I just blanked on his name. Uh, he does million dollar ads. Um, can't think of his name right now. Um, and I'm not going to search for it. I know his website, but I, um, yeah, he, he's amazing. I followed him for a while. He, he's a gamer also can't, uh, he's won two comic club wars a bunch of times. Um, he's on all their shows and all that, but I downloaded his and I used that as a framework for our, uh, super Facebook tools. And, I just pretty much uh, downloaded his funnel and changed it to what I wanted and changed the framework. So being able to show ClickFunnels users how quickly they could quote unquote funnel hack someone uh, was an easy way to pitch the, the thing because now they're not wasting time on actually going step by step 
to, to build out these funnels, they could just already download a template in a way and then change out the, the copy that they, that, they've, uh, that they have and have done their market research with. And so, and then uh, they didn't have to like connect a whole email marketing, like active campaign. So all these things um, kind of just made it like really easy for me to sell. And then the same thing with super Facebook tools is I saw all the tools that people, or even that I was using and uh, was like, Hey, you're spending like, you know, a hundred dollars or $200 for all these same tools. Why not spend 47 or 97 or 147 for the same thing? And then uh, people love that and they, they wanted a tool, but then we're like, they wanted to sell it as their own kind of like what I did with uh, high level. And I was like, well, we can create a white label service for this. And so that was two income streams where the end user can now have it. And then people that wanted to resell it could have it. So those are two different price points. And then uh, people wanted to sell the ability to white label it for them people. So then it was like another thing. So we had multiple ways to leverage the software, especially since we owned it. And so being able to see what people were using and show them something that's better for less work or less time was a very easy sell versus someone who's never used, uh, you know, a click funnels or a CRM tool and trying to convince them why they need this was much harder. Okay. And obviously with other, like, for instance, like go high level affiliates or white label agencies or for other, like Facebook software tools, like how did you like, how did you stack your offer in a way? Like, did you add any additional bonuses or was it just, Hey, this is what it is, buy it or don't. Like, did you try to compete in any way against the other types of people or the other softwares? So with um, the first one, it was called the digital tycoons. And when I first, I think that was beat, like, now it's high levels, pretty well known in, in the space. But when I was doing it, no one kind of, it wasn't known at all. And so I was kind of like a first mover on that software, which allowed me to kind of get really, I didn't have to do an offer stack. I didn't really have to do all that. I think I had some um, bonuses where I think I gave them a funnel of mine, but it wasn't really like crazy. Um, I know without like, for instance, when you're an affiliate marker uh, and uh, pushing a lot of the similar products like click funnels, now high level, a lot of people want like incentive to buy from you directly hmm. versus um, just getting it from someone else or directly from the person themselves. So uh, I know that a lot of people will do offer stacks where essentially they will say, you'll get this software, but we'll include our you know top 10 organic strategies to sell this product. Mm -hmm. We'll give you the best funnels uh, that convert the highest for you know 10 different businesses. Um, we'll add the best um, places to get uh, VAs that are you know that can teach you or that can run your ads for you or whatever that is. Um, like they'll, they'll offer stack a bunch of value so that it increases the, I guess the proposition of buying the software from you versus buying it from someone else. Unfortunately, I didn't really do that, um, with, uh, ours. And I, I will say that if you give enough value to people, that's not really needed in a way because, or even a sales fund, I'll give you a perfect example. We're doing our inner circle and I'm just sending people a link to a Stripe. There's no sales funnel. There's no, um, there's no value stack or offer stack. Um, they know, like they kind of know what they're getting within the inner circle, but I mean, I do kind of have a value stack, but it's, there's no funnel. There's uh, no website. It's just a, a link to the um, to purchase it and it's being just fine. So it, you kind of just, it depends on how much rapport you've built with your audience also. And if you haven't watched our, uh, organic strategy, marketing strategy, definitely check that out. I think that using this and that, uh, podcast 
back to back would be uh, amazing value. So definitely remember to subscribe to the channel. And um, yeah, I think that it just depends on how much value you've put in in the past and how much value you uh, consistently give to people because uh, I have done value stacks and I have not. And it just, I haven't had a, a, any kind of issues with either or. What about you? Are you a big fan of uh, having a value stack when it's a, I think, okay, so if it's a competitive market, then your value stack is important. But mm -hmm. if your branding and your marketing is on point, then I think that the, uh, people buy into the actual person than the actual offer. So it depends on the their stage of the journey. So if they're like yeah. brand new, trying to start up a start um, a software company, then a value stack is not going to hit. Um, right. it, like and obviously increasing that irresistible offer, like that that's not going to hit when you start up because as you say, like that brand then isn't there yet. Um, that like oh I want to buy whatever brand the Duff drops because the guy's a legend. Like that's not there for them. Um, so right. adding those guarantees, those irresistible, the value stack, like anything you can give them to go, yeah, do you know what? I'll, I'll give this a go with this guy. Um, because obviously nine times out of 10, people who've bought a soft, people who've bought your software, they, they've bought a software before, they've either loved it, they hate it, or they felt like they've been burned. So you've got to try and get past that sort of, um, that sort of scenario um, by increasing that value to start with. And then eventually, yeah, you'll be in a position like Brandon, like myself, where you can literally just drop whatever and people are like, yep, not a problem. That's fine. Yeah. And it's what it takes. It time. Did, well, and you have to think that when we drop something, it's because people are waiting for the next thing that we drop. It's not like we're just going to drop anything. It's, it's what people have been wanting. We've done the market research and we don't need to have this ama amazing um, funnel to convince them otherwise. They're just waiting for that next thing, which is a good place to be in. But you also have to think that, that uh, when you create an offer or you create a value stack, those stacks are made to overcome objections um, and put people in a place to buy. So like when people are like, well, how do I get like traffic to this software? When you are including the offer of all the organic, uh, the 101 best organic marketing um, tactics for a software company, if that's in there, that already kind of alleviates that objection. Um, how am I going to run ads, you know, to this software? Then, you know, the top five converting, uh, ad swipes that you can steal from uh, me that I've spent over a million dollars in ad revenue to, you know, make blah, blah, blah. So like all those offers are just there to kind of overcome objections. But when you have a raving fan base that is interested, they, they really don't have, they, they know where your other products have been and how much value uh, it's given. If they spent like say a hundred dollars and it's made them a thousand dollars, and then you drop that next thousand dollar product. They know that if they buy that thousand dollar product, it's going to make them ten thousand dollars or something of the extent. So um, it's important to have an offer stack, but make sure that you use it in a way that's to uh, overcome objections and not really a way to um, just provide an inflate fake value. Because if you put in all the stuff that you that's not helpful for them then it, they're just still not going to be in love with the product. No, that makes, that makes total sense. And as you say, like you've, it, it's that finding that balance, isn't it? It's like finding like, right. Like when's the right time to plug the right type of marketing or offer strategy. Um, and, but obviously you, know, you don't get anywhere near that. If you don't obviously identify what people are struggling with, what's how your software can help and, and that type of thing. And um, so, yeah, that front end is quite valuable. The, the offer stack is like, yeah, it, it may or may not be needed depending on where your personal business brands are, um, but only you can make that decision when you get there. Um, do you have any sort of sort of final thoughts on like how how to build that software company? Like obviously some people have like white labels, I think obviously are a great place to start and that's where you started because um, yep. that gets rid of all your, I don't know how to build a software. 
um, and it right. gets rid of that object. So it gets gets your feet in the water, doesn't it, nicely, in order to learn how to sell a software and to learn how to sell that software company. And then from there, yeah, it would be a case of actually going and finding the next thing. Yeah, so I think the, the first thing would be to use the software. I think that a lot of people that you like make see if there's an affiliate program with it. Um, I think that a lot of people will tend to sell the thing and never actually try it. And then they don't have conviction in whatever they're trying to sell because they can't even explain how to use it. And so if you can explain how to use it and the benefits of it by using it, then you're going to have much more conviction in yourself and in the product. And it's going to be, it's going to make it a lot easier to sell. So I'd start off with being an affiliate of something, make sure it's uh, for you and that it's useful to your audience. And then if they have a white label option, then get into white labeling because instead of trying to sell something for 30 or 40%, you're selling it for hundred percent and collecting hundred percent of the profits. And that um, one, it just allows you to be, you just have to sell less to make more. So that's an, another thing. Plus it, then it gets even more conviction because your name's on it, your branding's on it. So it allows you to be, be much more confident. I think also that's huge in any kind of business. You have to be confident in yourself uh, to sell anything because if you're not confident in yourself uh, and then that kind of falls into having confidence in other products, um, people are going to see that. And then from there, you can just, um, if, if that's your game and you want to just stick with white labeling it and not have control, because if the product say, for instance, shuts down, then all your business is gone. Um, but obviously you have an email list. So that's good because then you can obviously leverage that and into the next thing. If, but I mean, I'm not saying high level is going to go down, but that's just, if it does. Um, and then obviously you can start your own product. And then that's where we created super Facebook tools. We um, had a small group to start, got market research, had a minimum viable product. I think that is super huge because if you have a minimum viable product, you can sell something that is kind of like a work in progress and get first movers onto something mm -hmm. and get them to test the product for you. They're kind of like the, almost like your beta team because they'll tell you they'll vote with their money they'll if they consistently are spending time using the product and paying monthly for it and then they keep adding say uh bug fixes or things that come up or i wish this was here or i wish this um could do this or i use this other software it'd be nice to have you know this feature within the software and then that's how we built out super Facebook tools by uh, having that first core group, uh, making that first thousand dollars a month of recurring income. And then from there, uh, just adding to it and then doing outreach for uh, other people that have similar software. So joining their groups that those that software that that software has um, or say affiliates that or in that, um, that affiliate marketers that might use software. So I'd go into affiliate groups, start building relationships with affiliates. And that's how uh, we started our SaaS company. Nice. I absolutely love it. Um, as you say, like it goes from the market research, finding the viable product, putting out whether you're creating it yourself, minimal viable or the, the white label. Um, you do have less control, but it's a quicker setup. I, I think like go with obviously your white label. And then the marketing strategy. So you're probably going to go organic, which means you definitely need to watch the last of the last episode in the podcast because we talk heavily about organic marketing strategies. And then you're good to go and just don't forget to ask for money. Yeah, I think that's the most important <laughs> part. And then obviously um, just believing in yourself and the product because that's going to kind of just push other people into believing it. And uh, if you have conviction in it, they're going to see that. But if you're like, eh, the product's all right, you know, it's it's kind of buggy, it, it you know, it doesn't work all the time, then people are going to see that and they're not going to want to buy from you. So uh, having a good product and that people believe in and that you believe in is going to be much easier to sell than something that you don't believe in because um, 
it's people are going to see that and they're not going to believe in it, the product either. And then you're going to lose steam because no one's buying. And then it's just going to downward spiral. So, uh, yeah. And then ask for the money, as you said, absolutely love it. Final thoughts. Uh, ask for the money <laughs> okay guys if you have been obviously watching till the end greatly appreciate it hope you've enjoyed this show um if you have got any comments obviously drop them below um go find us on, on facebook um ask, ask brandon directly any software questions um and i will see you in the next episode peace